Hello folks, so today I just want to give you a small update of my game engine project. So as you know already it is a learning project, right? So I really not planning to uh, you know build next real engine or anything. One, I don't have the skill to do so, two it would take me freaking forever. I think I read somewhere that Real Engine has a gazillion man hour development and stuff like that, right? So it's gonna take me way too long. So um, that's actually the first video I do about it. Uh, I made a blog post, uh, you can find it on my website, uh, how I planned a couple of things and where I was at the moment, right? So I was able to get a couple of sprite render, then I had the collision in, basic collision and stuff. So. There was a lot of talking in how to handle collision properly because I ended up having the double dispatch problem when you have two polymorphic polymorphic call to resolve and and st stuff like that. That was solved, uh, I think, in a decent way. Uh, so next step was actually then start to clean up a lot of the stuff because there is so much mess right now. Uh, a lot of stuff was crapped up together as a proof of comp com concept. So now I'm starting to properly clean up some things. One of those things were the sprites, right? So this uh, character was moving on the screen, fine. Uh, actually, I can't even show it, show it to you. The character was moving on the screen, and but for example, the logic for moving the sprite was hard-coded inside the actual sprite. So I, I needed to, to make it better. Right, so to do stuff properly, how to handle static sprites, how to handle different moving kind of sprites, and so on. So what I end up doing was so here we have a header. I have a basic sprite class, right? So the sprite class uh, override uh, actually inherits from a component render, right? Because I have a component system which will need a lot of fixes in the future, and I think that's the next step I'm going to work on. But anyway. Um, I have a virtual function uh, that they rend call render that they need to implement, where basically handles all the render, right? And so we can see that in the render, it's pretty simple. I, I set a couple of attributes in the shader because I, I get I get all the attributes for the program, OpenGL program from the render and so on. I update the camera. I get the matter the, the, the final matrix for my object. Sorry for my sprite. Then enable the leader attribute and just start to uh, to I, I call the draw draw arrays so I draw a triangle and that's it. Uh, probably not super efficient done this way. I uh, might have probably to uh, to crank up together all the same texture. I don't know. Uh, I will need how to do that uh, do that in the future. And that's it. But you see here, you don't have any kind of logic to help you. Uh, uh, have custom behavior like you might do in Unity, I don't know, with a, uh, with a C sharp script or anything. So, how do we actually make my player to move? So, actually, my sprite, sprite sheet uh, to loop correctly because let me see if I can find it on the fly. Uh, and my second monitor, guys, bear with me a second. There we go. So, this is, for example, my sprite sheet for my character, right? So I need a way, a logic to say, okay, which row and column to drop. And before, this was hard coded directly in the sprite class. So I was accessing the joystick, whatever, to see if I was going left or right. I was picking at the one of those things. I was manually handling the the flipping, so which which frame to pick, and that was wrong, right? So I decided to clean that up. So I, I left the regular component sprite simple uh, for static sprite that's nice and fast, no extra stuff. Instead, I, I subclassed again from component render uh, component sprite animated, right? And it's pretty, it's quite similar. I will also try to see if I can find, you know, a way to remove uh, all the code duplication. There is not much of that, but there is a little. So I want to remove that as well. But the, the main thing is this sprite logic. Uh, I got a pointer to a sprite logic, right? 
whereas PyLogic is nothing more than a simple class with a pure virtual function called getActionRow, right? Which this probably will change name in the future because it's giving back row and column, but this was just for basically testing. So I just need to inherit. Oops, I just need to inherit from that. Implement all my custom behavior. We see I implemented actually a couple, and and basically. In the in the render function, you will see here. I just call a hey, logic. Give me your row and column, and now I, I will use that to compute a U and B offset and set that in the shader, right? So in the OpenGL shader, I can offset correctly the texture and grab the the correct frame I want, and then do my rendering, All right? So if we check uh, a couple of the uh, implementation, I actually implemented two of them. One is called Sprite Logic. Uh, sorry, Sprite Layer, which Again, this is just temporary here because this is actually part of the game. It shouldn't be part of the engine, so we need to move that. But here again, I was trying to finalize the design of the sprites, right? So and then a sprite periodic, I called it like that. So basically, it's just you know like um, a sprite which loops uh, infinitely, and we can see them used uh, again in the game. So the sprite player is actually this sprite here. And instead, uh, the periodic ones are this one, they loop in a different speed, and we also have static sprites, right? So I was able to differentiate different logic, and it works. It worked really well out of the box. That's kind of a cheap way to try to mimic scripting capabilities, right? Uh, it's not really scripting, you are coding that in your actual game, but is not scripting support is not something I'm willing to implement in the near future because it's a massive undertaking. So, but not saying I won't do that. We'll see in the future. Uh, but for now, so this allowed me a bit more flexibility to implement different behavior, and we can see in the sprite player I'm accessing the the stick. Sorry, the the arrow, not not the joystick. Then I'm using a clock. To compute the correct frame and then just setting the wanted row and column counter. Instead, in the periodic sprite, it's much more simple. I just have to compute using a clock um, which frame I want to pick up. So, this is the again, this is the final result. So, the, the fire is it, just a coincidence, it's just basic one of the first sprites. I, I found a pack sprite of elemental. There was standard and everything that's that's fire. It's kind of fit with the dungeon style thing, so it's not it's not intended to be uh, be harmful to my character. Uh, also, because you can see, I didn't register this object, this game object, neither in the physic in the physic uh, world, neither in the game world. So the game, the actual game, has no idea these exist, right? Only the renderer knows that because I registered that on the render. So anyway, that's that's the current state of things. And again, uh, I will make it. Uh, I will. There is still a lot of fix, uh, a lot more to implement. So I think next things will be uh, to implement properly the components, a more flexible component because. There, it's a really tough decision how to handle that. Uh, so far, all my research highlight that there is no silver bullet for that. There is not a finite way to do that. So each way has pros and cons. Most of us engine come up with hybrid, of, with again different pros and cons. And also, there might be other fixes to you. I don't know. Like this grid is actually crashing. If I go outside of the grid, yeah. So this is not handled right now. Uh, I will need to fix that as well. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. So this was just a small update, guys. Bye.